Welcome. So today I'm going to talk about the idea of matrix division in terms of whether it exists or, you know, how it works. And the reality is, in a traditional sense, matrix division doesn't exist. But if we look at what division really means, then it sort of does exist. This starts to pop up, or these types of questions tend to pop up when I have this kind of matrix division question, where I have uh, one matrix multiplied by x, and it's equal to another matrix. If I were to have a real number setup of this, so 3x is equal to 15, my logical conclusion would be I divide both sides by 3, and these threes cancel out and I get x and then I do 15 divided by 3 which is I have 15 items and I break them into three groups how many are in each group and the answer is 5 or I could say I have uh, 15 items and I want to um, have groups of size 3 how many groups would I have so same thing but I would apply that logic by applying that logic to the matrices I would be dividing by Uh, this first matrix on both sides. So I would just solve it and get an answer. And uh, I, th I know that to multiply this matrix times this one, I would do 32 uh, times 2, and then I'd do negative 20, or I'd add negative 20 times 0, and that would give me the A1 term, or the first term here, and to do the second one, I would do uh, 32 times 4, plus negative 20 times negative 5. That would be a multiplying version. So to divide it, I assume I would do 32 divided by 2 and then uh, maybe subtract, because that's the opposite of add, negative 20 divided by 0. But the problem is, obviously it doesn't work because you can't have negative 20 divided by 0. So the issue is that the way that we traditionally see division is not the way that matrix uh, a matrix can handle that type of division or that type of process. Now. If I look at what I'm doing up here, you'll see that maybe if I just renew how I was taught or uh, how I perceive division, it can be uh, more closely related to what I'm actually supposed to do in the problem. Uh, I have this 3 divided by 3, and I'm trying to do that because I want to get it to be 1. So basically, I want to use an inverse to create an identity. Uh, so I have the, the 1 that I'm looking for to get in front of the x. But the real inverse would be 1 third. And maybe I could write it as 3 times 3 to the negative 1 power. Also, that will get me to 1 as well. Uh, and we're going to use this type of notation in just a minute when we talk about the, how we move forward with this matrix. On the other side of it, if I have 15 divided by 3, I should be able to just apply the same logic and say that it's the same as 15 times 1 third. And that would equal 5. Or 15 times 3 to the negative 1. And that will also give me 5. So if I, pers if I start to look at division as not this, I take something and I break it apart, and instead look at it as I take a number and multiply it by the inverse of whatever I'm quote unquote dividing by, then I, there is a little bit of a connection between how a matrix works and how a, um, a real number set or just these general basic uh, division sets actually work. But we're looking at the idea of there are some differences between how we would treat standard real numbers and how we would treat a matrix. The first issue is whether or not com uh, multiplication is commutative. So when I have 4 times 3, that equals 12. And if I flip the order, and with regular numbers it works. So yes, this is commutative. When you do a matrix, when you work with matrix, it, uh, matrices, it doesn't do that. If I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and I want to multiply it by 4, 3, 2, 1, Uh, I would do 1 times 4 and then plus 2 times 2 which would be 8 total and that would go here in my A1 spot and I would continue on to do the other ones but I'm not going to make you sit through that so I end up with 8, 5, 20 and 13 however if I flip the order of the matrix or the matrices so I put this matrix in front and this in the back if I do 4 times 1, I get 4, and then I do 3 times 3, and I get 9. Well, 4 plus 9 is 13. So it starts to flip things around a little bit. So as you can see, this is not the same as this. So if multiplication, is multiplication commutative with a matrix? No. Matrices do not have commutative multiplication. 
that leads to a problem because it redefines how we think of an identity because if we did an identity before and of course an identity is like the base form of anything when I think of an identity for um, multiplication with regular numbers I would think okay so I take if I wanted for 7 I would take 7 I multiply by 1 7th which is my inverse and my identity value is 1 that's the identity property I multiply by the inverse and I get it so my inverse here is defined as 1 over the number. That's how I have to define my inverse in terms of real numbers. And if I want to look at division as a component of multiplication instead of as its own individual operation, the way that I view that identity versus inverse changes things. The problem is my matrix identity is not 1 over the number because it doesn't really I mean in terms of it doesn't look standard like this I'm not looking for a 1 that's not my overall goal instead my overall goal is this uh, that's my identity matrix and the reason that it's the mat the identity is because I want the ones that's still valid but I need to have one in each column and that's it it's a bit like uh, on off switches you can only have in each column you just want to have one of them on and you want to have each row being represented so uh, that identity is different in order to get there it changes how I perceive my mul multiplicative inverse so instead of having it just being one over and I just do some stuff if I have a matrix A and I say it's A B C D if you look in wherever you're looking the inverse has two parts to it. Number one, it changes the order of the terms or the elements in the matrix. So I just flip the ones on the major diagonal. So D and A. And then I just want to keep where uh, the ones off the major diagonal are, but I want to change their sign. So and then on top of that, I have to multiply by the determinant. And that seems like a lot of work. Do you really need to go through all that? Why can't you just do the flip around thing? Well, let's look at it and determine whether or not we need to do the determinant because it's a little bit of extra work that I don't particularly want to do and I've been fiddling with it here, obviously. So um, why do we need the determinant? Well, let's look at the equation or, or the setup that we had before with uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, I said that my goal uh, in the end of all things is to uh, sort of get to a point where I get that 1, 0, 0, 1 set up. That's where I want to head with it. So it's sort of important for me to be able to get there. So let's just multiply it. Instead of thinking uh, we're going to multiply by the inverse, so let's theorize that the inverse is just the flip part I talked about. So we're going to switch the things on the major arc and the ones off the major arc, which is going to change sign. And maybe this is good enough and we can move on with our lives. So I would do 1 times 4 plus 2 times negative 3, which is minus 6, of course. And then I want to do 1 times negative 2, and then 2 times 1. And then I do 3 times 4, uh, and then 4 times negative 3. And then I do uh, 3 times negative 2, and 4 times 1. So when I work all that out, my result gives me negative 2, 0, 0, and negative 2. My goal, however, is my identity matrix. See, it doesn't match. So people thought about it for a while, I guess, and decided that, hey, you know, if I could just get those 2's to flip around, things are looking pretty good. And to get to that negative 2, I could, or from negative 2 to 1, I just need to divide by negative 2. So they looked at the determinant of the original matrix, by the way. So I would do, uh, my determinant would be 1 times 4 minus 2 times 3. And that would be uh, 4 minus 6, or negative 2. So they're like, okay, well, maybe I can use that, multiply by negative 2, and then they realized that they needed to do 1 over negative 2, and then when I did the scalar multiplication back, this would give me 1, this would give me 0, this would give me 0, and this would give me 1. So yeah, do you need the determinant? Absolutely. That's why the formula for the determinant ends up having it, or for the inverse does have the determinant in it. You do 1 over the determinant of the matrix, and then you want to make sure you flip your uh, 
major arcs around, so this becomes uh, C, I'm sorry, D, my bad, and this becomes A, this becomes negative B, and negative C. And that's kind of how it works. That's why you don't have matrix division, or in a way, you really do. So let's use it to solve the answer or the question at the beginning. In order to make that happen, the first thing that I need to do is, of course, find the inverse. So I'm going to do the determinant first. My determinant is uh, negative 10. You would subtract a zero, so it's just negative 10. And I need to remember my formula for inverse is 1 over the determinant. And then I need to flip around the order, so d, a, negative b, negative c. So for me, my inverse is really um, 1 over negative 10, and that's being multiplied by negative 5 and 2, negative 4, and 0. So I do the little scalar multiplication here. I'd end up with one half, um, two fifths, nothing, and negative one over five. Now I can take this, that would be my inverse of A, and I can multiply it by the matrix here, this two by two. So I'm going to do one half. And that's the, the big thing that I should say at this point, is you need to make sure that you put the inverse first. Because in the universe of real numbers, the order of them doesn't matter. But it absolutely matters when you're dealing with a, a matrix situation. So you need to set it up in a way that is the uh, inverse needs to come first. Otherwise, you'll get some weird answer. And it'll drive you insane that you couldn't get to where you're supposed to be. So in this case, I would do 1 half times uh, 32, which I last time I checked is 16. And from that point... I would do 2 fifths times negative 20, so that would give me 16 minus 8, and that will give me 8 here. And then I'll do 1 half times uh, negative 20, and that would give me negative 10. And then I'll do 2 fifths times 40, which is 16, and that would give me a 6. So negative 10 plus 16 gives you 6. Uh, 0 times 32 is 0. Negative 1 fifth times negative 20 gives you positive uh, 4. And then I would just do the 0 again over here, and the negative 1 fifth times uh, 40 gives you negative 8. So that's how you'd set it up, and it would work out uh, to where you could get the answer. But does matrix division exist? Yes, in a way, but not the way that we traditionally think about it. So it depends on where your origin of the question is coming from to whether it does or does not exist. A very vague answer and a longish video to make it happen, but at least you have some explanation.